Define how bad the problem is right now. Well, look at it this way. Um, we can do a work rate, an employment rate for the prime age men. If you take a look at last month's numbers, they're lower than they were in 1940 at the tail end of the Great Depression. So we hmm. really do have a depression scale problem for work for men in the United States. If you look at the 21st century as a whole, uh, the work rate for prime age men is actually substantially lower than it was in 1940. So we've basically got a 1937 scale uh, work crisis for men in America, and we're missing it because we only look at the unemployment rate and at the number of people employed. We forget to look at the numbers for people who are neither working nor looking for work. For every guy who is out of work and looking for a job these days, there are over four who are neither working nor looking for work. So if you track the unemployment happy talk, you are missing four-fifths of the problem. Were they working at one point? Some of them were, but many of them are long-term dropouts from the workforce. What you see if you look over the history of the post-war era is a uh, a series of declining trajectories, almost like you know, failing rockets. Um, each younger group works less at any given age in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s than the group before them. It's almost like rings on a tree. And so now you have a very large number of men who are basically long timers out of the workforce altogether. Hmm. So why aren't they working? Well, um, one reason that doesn't fly is that we can't say they're at home taking care of other people. Um, there is an enormous care chasm between guys who are out of the workforce and women who are out of the workforce. It's like an order of magnitude different. If you ask these guys, and we do in these different labor surveys, you know, why aren't you at work? Uh, only a tiny fraction of them say that it's not because there are any jobs for them. And today that would be kind of implausible if you look at the uh, peacetime you know, labor, uh, labor shortage that we've got going on. Um, they, some of them say that it's because of health problems. Some of them say that it's because of other problems. But it's not because of a lack of work and it's not because of things that they're doing at home. Other when did the problems start in earnest, like these big numbers? That's a really interesting question. For the first two decades of the post-war era, there was no sign of this problem at all. Um, then starting around 1965, uh, a flight from work by men started to become evident in these numbers. And the really weird thing about this flight from work is that it's almost like a straight line from the 1960s to today. I mean, you know, People are a little bit disorderly and, you know, irregular. But if you look at the numbers themselves, it's almost tracking a straight line from through the 60s and 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, the 2010s. Um, mm. It's been going on uh, with almost, you know, kind of geophysical regularity now for almost 60 years. I don't get it. If, if it were pandemic related, I would get it. They got paid by the government to stay at home. They liked it. The pandemic induced a lot of stress, anxiety, depression in people that they're struggling to get over to this day. I don't get 50 years of men leaving the workforce more and more and more. Like, I don't, what is that? Well, it's, it's Megan, it's clearly unnatural because for what, 10,000 generations, 50,000 generations in Homo sapiens in our species, men are kind of like a natural provider force. And now you have an enormous contingent of men in modern America who are cast into this unnatural role as dependence upon society. You couldn't have something like this happening if we weren't as fantastically prosperous as we are today. Um, you go through the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, up to the present, and you can come up with different kind of explanations that kind of work in part. Um, one of the things that is said about uh, rich countries in general is that they've been affected by uh, what 
economists call structural and economic transformation, you know, decline of manufacturing, uh, outsourcing, China enters the WTO. I mean, there's some truth to that in uh, depressing work rates and labor force participation for men all around the world, but it doesn't really explain what you see in our country. I mean, uh, you wouldn't have a straight line out of the workforce if this was uh, a consequence of the business cycle, right? You'd see something that was kind of wavy. Yeah. Uh, you'd see the China shock when China entered the WTO. You don't see that at all. Uh, so, Is it related to, to women entering the workforce in greater numbers? I mean, are these like... You know, is it a role reversal where these guys are staying home and the and the wives are bringing home the bacon? Well, you know, there are some people who argue that I'm not so persuaded, and I'll tell you why. Because I mean, women obviously have always worked. It's just since the end of World War II that they you know, got paid for it in the labor force. But mm -hmm. there's this huge uh, influx of women into the labor force after World War II. And uh, if they were displacing men, you know, the— uh, the participation rates would have flatlined. Instead, what we mm. saw is that the participation rates went way up for like 50 years, from 1950 to you know uh, the end of the century. And that means that women were kind of supplementing men. Since uh, 2000, the participation rates for both men and women have been going down. So they've both been feeling the same pain. Um, there's also something that I mention in this, uh, in this book, uh, which we might want to keep our eye on. Uh, I'm not sure that it's a four alarm fire yet, but it's, a, uh, uh, let's say a yellow flashing light. Uh, this is the women without work problem for prime age women who are out of the workforce and don't have kids at home uh, and aren't currently married. There are about 3 million of them. And some of the patterns that they're reporting about their own lives, what they do with their own time, their drug use, mm. are looking a little mm -hmm. bit too close for comfort to what I show in this book about the guys. What's prime age? What What is the prime age? What's the range? Oh, prime prime age is twenty five to fifty four, and oh, it's same not, as in the television key demo that we use to base our advertisement rates on twenty five to fifty four. That's the money spot. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't come up with this. I wasn't smart enough to come up with this demographic, but that's it, it's kind of self evident. You know, prime working age is twenty five to fifty four, but it's not just mm -hmm. all dollars and cents. I mean, this is also key group for raising. Uh, you know, raising children, starting families. It's got a tremendously important social component to it too. And a lot yeah. of the dropouts, a lot of the male dropouts, they're disproportionately unmarried, don't have kids at home. I mean, you drop out of the workforce, you're also dropping out of family, you're dropping out of community. One of the things which I think is really kind of spooky that you see from looking at some of these numbers is how the... Uh, Workforce dropout guys say that they're spending their time. What do they do between you this know waking terrifying. up, and going and going to sleep? Right. This is yes, their. Right, self wait, I want to. I want to get to that in one second. Like what they're how they're spending their time. But before we get to that, yeah. like if you said this this began in like even the nineties, I would get it. Opioid crisis hits. People are you know they're pulled into this darkness, and then sometimes it's hard to find a job. Right. Like if you're an active addict or a, an even a non using addict you have a criminal record, all this makes re-entering the workforce m much tougher, right? Much tougher. So that I would get starting back 30 years before that, my God, it's, I'm so confused. If you said this started in 2007, the advent of the iPhone, I'd say, I get it. People, it's addictive. You spend all day, you can't pull yourself, pull yourself away. You said COVID, right? Like this is a much bigger problem. It's been going on for decades. And Against it is the is the genetic gravitational pull of hunter gatherer support family be the man you know like it's the same reason why you know women like me who work can't deny that for most of us there is this biological pull to be with our children and like the, that's why we wrestle so much when we're not all day anyway I'm so confused Nick I don't I still don't get it but I do think those events I mentioned probably exacerbated it no sure absolutely let me mention a couple more. Um, the decline in the post-war era of the previous family system, you know, the two-parent family norm, mm -hmm. um, 
guys who are not in the workforce are way more likely not to be in families either. The rise of the uh, modern welfare state, our uh, European uh, cousins tell us mm. that we're terribly stingy. But in 1965, we were even stingier. The welfare state was still a twinkle in Lyndon Johnson's eye back then. And one of the things which we have seen over the last half century, I think, is how um, how terribly destructive the um, the whole disability archipelago of benefit yes. payments for being out of work because you're uh, said to be not able to work has been. Imagine buying an Italian sports car or your dream home for less than $1 a day. Well, now you can own an X chair. That's the office chair I personally use in my office. And it is arguably the finest office chair in the world for only $20 a month. Yes, that is less than a dollar a day. For that amount of money, you can own something that's going to make the hours spent at your house, at your desk, a thousand times more comfortable and productive. Not only do I love my X chair, Abby's got one. She loves hers too. The, Kevin's trying to get one, her husband. And uh, Doug's, I'm gonna get out. It's mine. <laughs> From the moment I first sat down on my X chair, I immediately felt the difference. Trust me, once you sit down in an X chair, you're gonna understand. There is an X chair for every style and for every budget. They even offer built-in massage. Who doesn't want that in their chair? Not to mention heating and cooling. As we go into these cooler months, something you may want, and all for less than a dollar a day. Check out all the options and their amazing financing plans at xchairmk.com. That's a letter, xchairmk.com. No other chair can compare to the X chair. Go to xchairmk.com now. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.